All right, good morning, uh, everybody. I guess I'm, um, yeah, this is um, Shakti, and I'm the uh, regional manager at Texel American University. First and foremost, I would like to um, welcome everybody uh, uh, for the participants who have come for this webinar. And uh, I'm going to talk about our speaker, Dr. Duckworth. I mean, he's our chief academic officer. He's a doctor by profession, and he worked with uh, a lot of uh, Caribbean medical schools. Um, right now, he's at Mississippi, United States. Um, so now the presentation is about uh, the global shortage of doctors and how um, we're going to overcome the pandemic, which is happening right now and also the importance of uh, the doctor's profession. So um, I'm leaving with uh, doctor. And um, yes, doctor. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for uh, signing in and coming uh, on uh, today uh, to hear about the global shortage of physicians and other healthcare professionals. Um, just a little bit about me, uh, as Shaki said, I spent some time working in Caribbean medical schools. Before that, I was uh, I spent uh, about 10 years as a general surgeon and emergency room medicine here in, in the United States. Uh, and then I spent about the last 20 years or so in various positions uh, in schools across the Caribbean, uh, in particular, Saiba University. Uh, and also uh, MUA on Nevis, um, as well as St. James. Uh, so uh, I've been with Texilla now for almost two years. What we're gonna do is talk a little bit about uh, the global uh, physician shortage uh, uh, and how the COVID-19 pandemic uh, uh, has so far affected it and probably will in the future. Uh, before the onset of this pandemic, uh, the World Health Organization had already estimated that there was gonna be a global shortage of about four and a half million or so healthcare professionals all across the globe. This includes physicians, nurses, uh, respiratory therapists, uh, radiation therapists, other types of healthcare professionals. Um, this shortage will be most acute uh, in developing countries and nations. Uh, and this is primarily due to uh, limited numbers and capacity of medical schools in those countries uh, to prepare physicians and other types of healthcare uh, professionals. Um, here in the United States, uh, last year in 2019, the Association of American Medical Colleges uh, put together uh, a uh, project and stated that uh, they were projecting that there was going to be a small growth in physicians in, by the year 2025 here in this country, but the demand would still uh, outgrow uh, the, the supply of physicians. In other words, even though there was going to be an increase in physicians, it still wouldn't meet the demand. Uh, this uh, limited supply is just uh, amplified across the globe, uh, as well as here in the United States. Here in this country, um, it, the uh, American Association of Medical Colleges uh, projected a growth by 17% of physicians by 2025. Uh, th and they're gonna need by at least 17% per year. Uh, this is due to changes in population size, uh, in particular, the younger folks below 18 years of age. That uh, population uh, segment is growing by uh, at least 5%. And then the older population is growing as well, uh, increasing tremendously by 41%. Both of these types of population subsets require a lot of healthcare, as I'm sure you are aware. So that's gonna accentuate the physician shortage. Here in this country, uh, an attempt to address this somewhat is also being met at the residency level. This is after medical school. Uh, and a bill has been introduced into Congress here in this country uh, recently, which would increase uh, over the next five years, the number of residency slots in the country by 15,000. This is a tremendous increase in residency spot, slots. And uh, even if they get close to that number, it's gonna be uh, a benefit for people who uh, wanna train in the United States um, uh, and even practice here. 
Uh, of course, after you finish your residency in the United States, you can practice just about anywhere you want in the in the world. Um, I believe that the, this uh, the pandemic will make this legislation even more uh, important uh, uh, to be passed. So that will increase the number of residencies here in this country. Um, that ends the uh, official uh, portion of the of the PowerPoint. Uh, I just want to say, you know, the pandemic uh, has changed medical education uh, across the world, not just in Guyana uh, and in the United States. Uh, this week, uh, I'm going to be attending a, a large webinar of medical uh, academics and professionals who are going to, we are basically sharing ideas about what we're doing about medical education. Uh, at Texella in Guyana, uh, our basic sciences have uh, continued almost uninterrupted uh, online, which has been a tremendous benefit that we've been able to do that. And our faculty have been uh, excellent in picking up the ball and, and making changes uh, literally on the fly uh, so that basic science students uh, and pre-med students too, for that matter, uh, are getting uh, a, a very good online experience. The problem comes with clinical students. The clinical students are the third and fourth year medical students that we have uh, at various places. Most of them are in Guyana. We have some in the United States and also in the Philippines. Uh, and really no medical schools across the world right now are allowing uh, clinical rotations for medical students. Uh, so uh, this is part of what I'm gonna be attending this meeting for. Uh, medical education, and I think healthcare and medicine in general will undergo a change as a result of this pandemic. Um, uh, not only will the need for physicians uh, be more acute, but also the uh, physicians who are adept at using technology will be important. Uh, that's the end of what I have to say. I just wanted to see if anyone has any questions or at this point or comments. Thanks a lot, um, Doctor, for sharing your your insights on the uh, on the current pandemic issues and the, the shortage of doctors across the globe and in the United States. I guess uh, if the participants, if you have any questions or clarifications, you can all, always feel free to uh, comment on the uh, the chat box at the bottom, um, so that uh, you know any questions pertaining to the uh, physician shortage or well, the pandemic that can be addressed immediately by Dr. Hugh. Um, yeah, that's it. I mean, uh, Doctor, I don't see that we have any questions so far. Um, all right, so um, that's pretty much, Doctor. I don't see any questions from the participants. Um, so thank you very much for sharing the insights about the, uh, the physician shortage. So right now, I would be taking um, two the programs offered by Texel American University. As you said, rightly said, there is a huge shortage of physicians. So we at uh, Texel offer medicine program and uh, you know, trying to um, produce as many doctors as possible. As, as of now, we have about like 650 students, the future doctors, like they're from 40 different countries and they've been studying in Texel. Um, all right, thanks a lot, doctor. So I would be, you know, um, I guess you have a meeting scheduled. I mean, you can proceed with your meeting and then I will be uh, proceeding with uh, the programs and the information about the Texas American University. Thank you, appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, doctor. All right, um, good morning, everybody. Um, let me introduce once, once again myself. I'm. Shakti Kumar, the Regional Manager at Texel American University. And uh, I welcome everybody here for this uh, webinar. Uh, prior to uh, this presentation right now, I guess Dr. Hugh might have shared um, the, uh, the global physician shortage and how we're going to overcome um, the shortage of doctors at the same time in in the event of any pandemic issues, how are we going to manage that? So having said that, Texas American University has um, a fantastic curriculum, especially for uh, the doctors, the doctor's program. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna take you through um, 
the programs and what we offer and what is the tuition fee, what is the scholarship that the Caribbean students are going to get. All right. Um, so far, for people or students um, who do not know much about Texas American University, Texas American University is located in the Caribbean, again, which is a part of the CARICOM. Um, we have a main campus in, in Guyana. We have another campus in Zambia, which is in the southern part of Africa. We also have a campus in the Middle East, which is uh, close by uh, Dubai. Um, so overall, we have graduated uh, more than 300 doctors. And the one best thing about Texas American University, we, uh, we adhere to US standard because we have a curriculum which has been approved and recognized by United States Board. So that's the same curriculum which has been incorporated in the, um, um, I mean, in this curriculum. All right, and um, so what does TAU offers? I mean, at, at present, TAU offers a medicine program. It's called the Doctor of Medicine or the MBBS. Um, at present, we have about 650 students from 40 plus countries. Um, so this webinar is mostly uh, focusing on the Caribbean uh, students and the, uh, um, so if you, if you see the Caribbean, we have students, uh, quite a lot of students from Jamaica, we have students from Trinidad, we have students from Bahamas, we have students from St. Lucia, we have students from Grenada. Yes, uh, we, we have quite a lot of students globally spread. And to talk about our the campus, uh, it is a huge, well-built campus, modernized classrooms, and all the classrooms are fully digitally equipped. You would not see any blackboard, or you would not see any, um, you know, a, a faculty or a professor comes in and take class with a chalk piece and board. It pretty much more of digitalized. The faculties will teach classes online. I mean. And I say um, online, it is completely on the uh, digital platform, with the presentation and with more of interactive way of you know, learning. Um, we have six high-tech laboratories with pathology, anatomy, biochemistry, skills lab. And every student who joined with Texas American University will be provided an access on the digital library means you not only get an access to the regular library, you, can, you would also get an access to digital library, which means, I mean, even in your home or you go for vacation, still you could access the library online anytime, any, anywhere, as long as you are connected by internet. Right, and uh, some of the general um, Careers in the medicine field after you complete your medicine program. These are some of the uh, you know the career opportunities that you could see. You can become a pediatrician. You can become a cardiologist, neurologist. Yes, the doctor of medicine or the MBBS is you know is the uh, is the bachelor's program. However, in order to work in this. The careers, I mean, you have to do a post graduation or you have to do your master's in the respective field. It's called a specialization. Yes, once you complete your specialization, you can work as a specialist. All right, and uh, how come Texila is adhere or following the US standard as we are in academic partnership with a university in the United States? It's called PONS. Health Science University. Um, so basically, the Ponce Health Science University, which has been approved by the uh, the, uh, the Ministry of Education in the U.S. and also the uh, it's approved by the Lights and Committee of Medical Education, which is the accrediting body of all the curriculum in the U.S. So obviously, we follow the same curriculum. So if any students who study with us, they get used to the US curriculum and the advanced hands-on knowledge about the, the Doctor of Medicine program. All right, so these are some of the pictures that you could see of how a library looks like. I mean, and the computer laboratory is also equipped with uh, more than 150 computers. 
system microbiology and the anatomy laboratory. We also have, I mean, um, a separate uh, uh, the recreation hall where it's completely occupied with the games and the other activities, which means to say um, we not only focus on the studies, apart from the studies, the leisure time, students get into the recreation rooms where you have uh, pools, you have um, dominoes, you have basketball shoes, you have table tennis, and uh, you know, these are the, uh, the games that we have at, you know, at the campus as well. All right, so um, what are the entry, entry requirements to study medicine at Texas American University? Student with uh, CSEC, provided you have any one science subject, math and English. So these three subjects are mandatory. Let me repeat that, any one science except agricultural science, it could be uh, Let's say it could be physics, it could be chemistry, or it could be integrated science or biology. Any one science, math, English, and any other two subjects. So totally you have to have five subjects of which English, math, and science are mandatory. And the grade for all the five subjects should be one to three. Right, so if you have the grade of one to three in all the five subjects, you can study medicine with Texas American University for five and a half years. The duration would be five and a half years. I mean, students from Bahamas, if there's any, yes. Um, as once you complete your BHS, you have any one science, English, math, any any other two subjects. Yes, you will be qualified to study medicine at Texas American University. Any students from K or an associate level or bachelor's, depending upon your credits, you will be given an exemption. When I say exemption, you will not be studying five and a half years, instead you will be studying four and a half years. Um, let's say, I mean, student is having K one and two, right? And you, if you have physics, chemistry, and biology in K one and two, with a grade one to three, then you will be qualified for four and a half years, right? If you do not have any one science subjects, let's say you have only physics and chemistry, but you do not have biology, or you have chemistry and biology, and you do not have physics in K1 and 2, in that case, you will be studying five and a half years, right? So students, um, let's say if you've completed bachelor's in science, like bachelor's in biology or bachelor's in chemistry, you may be qualified for four years, but it's purely dependent upon your grades, it's purely dependent upon your GPA that what you have accumulated. So based on that, the duration will be All right, so let me tell you how uh, the programs are categorized. <clears throat> When I say five and a half years, you can see the slide, it says five and a half years. For the first one and a half years, student would study the paper. I mean, so it's a science foundation. The one and a half years would be, it's called a pre-medical, it's a science foundation. We ensure that the students are very strong in the science foundation before they get into the actual medicine program. So once the, uh, the one and a half years program the pre-medicine or the foundation is done, and then you will be moved into two years of preclinical. When I say preclinical, it's completely uh, a theoretical study. You study the actual medicine program, like anatomy and biochemistry and all this stuff. And uh, like mostly you study the dissections of the human body, which more, which more involve the practicals and the um, and um, uh, the laboratory sessions. And the last two years would be the clinical rotations. When I say clinical rotations, that's when you will be um, going to the hospitals and uh, you will be working along with the doctors and you will be observing what the doctors are doing. Preferably it's simple, to be making very simple, you just follow the footsteps of a doctor and you would observe what the doctors are doing. 
and uh, the hospital would give you a schedule as to when and what time you're supposed to come to the hospital. It could be early morning or it could be late night, depending upon the cases available. And uh, most probably you yourself see like a doctor because the last two years you're completely associated with the hospital. Right, so when I say hospital, so these are the hospitals that we are associated with. We have um, <clears throat> these hospitals in the United States. Um, some of the hospitals are South Shore Hospital, Chicago. We have Cook County Hospital, Chicago. We have Jackson Park Hospital. We have Muscle Medical Center. We have Rarita Hospital and some more as well. And if in case you want to do the rotations in the Caribbean in Guyana, yes, Georgetown Public Hospital, St. Joseph Mercy Hospital, New Amsterdam Hospital, and West Deborah. We also have the rotations in Philippines and in South Africa as well. All right, so these are some of the benefits that, uh, of doing the rotations in the United States. Let's say uh, if any student want to settle down in the United States. I see that most of Jamaicans and Trinidadians and Bahamans, always they want to settle down in the United States. In case you have an aspiration that you want to settle down in the United States, uh, the best thing is get into the, uh, the US, the clinical rotation option, where you get to know more about the rotations happening in the United States which should help you to clear your USMLE exam. When I say USMLE, if any student want to practice in US, you, have, you should clear the exam, the, the board exam in the United States. It's called United States Medical Licensing Examination, right? So even for a Native American, if you want to practice in the United States, he has to clear, you can see here, the United States Medical Licensing Exam. So only if he clears, or if he or she clears the US Assembly, you can practice as a doctor in the United States. All right, so at Texas American University, since the curriculum is more of US-based curriculum, I mean, if in case if you want to, you know, settle down in US, it helps you to crack, it helps you to crack the US Assembly exams more easier because the curriculum is a US-based curriculum. All right, so these are some of the, the recognitions that we have. I mean, um, it has been approved by the, um, yeah, which has been approved by the National Accreditation Council of Guyana, which comes under the Ministry of Education in Guyana. Right, and we are also uh, a member of the, uh, the World Directory of Medical School. And we are also listed in the World Health Organization. And we are also a member of the ECFMG, which is the Education Commission of Foreign Medical Graduates, which is the US-based recognition. So in case if anybody wants to get into US, you should be a member of ECFMG. And Texila is also a member of ECFMG, which helps any student if they want to get into US and practice, yes it would enable you to practice in US. All right, so now what makes Texila unique? I mean, you, you graduate with the US curriculum. Um, you have high-fi, high-tech laboratories in the campus. You have an um, option of doing the clinical rotations either in the United States, Philippines, South Africa, or in the Caribbean, Guyana. The classrooms are flipped classroom model, when I say flip classroom model, these are some of the, um, uh, the steps, or these are some of the activities which have been followed in the United States, which means to say, before the faculty teach a, a specific subject, um, the home assignments will be given to you in the form of a video, a video presentation. So you gotta look at the video before you come for the class, and before the faculty take the class, the same video will be played in the class as well with along with the other students. So you tend to see what is the video and once and after which the faculty will start taking the classes. So while the faculty is taking classes, you would have seen the video prior to that 
So which helps you to know what the faculty is exactly teaching and it stores in your mind faster because you have already seen a video which is visualized and which is already stored in your mind. So that helps the learning more easier and smarter. And that is kind of a technology we also follow at Texel American University. That's called flipped classroom model. And we also prepare the students for USMLE exams. When I say USMLE, it's United States Medical Licensing Exam. Uh, the campus is completely um, enabled with Wi-Fi. So all the students will be given a free Wi-Fi and campus is completely provided with 247 um, security camera. I, and uh, right. As, um, right, so I want to talk about CAMC. I mean, um, CAMC is the Caribbean Association of Medical Council, which is headquartered in Jamaica. Um, last time uh, when I was in Jamaica, this um, September, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, for this July 2019, when I was in Jamaica, we happened to meet the, the chief of the, the Caribbean Medical Council Association of Kingston. And he was also happy that um, most of the students from Texel American University are clearing their camp C with a good percentage. So the benefits of camp C is once you clear the camp C board exam, you can practice as a doctor in any Caribbean countries, be it Jamaica, be it Trinidad, be it Bahamas, be it St. Lucia, I mean, uh, Grenada or any Caribbean countries you can practice as a doctor. Right. So some of our students already cleared the CAMC exam in the, uh, the last year. And we were actually having uh, a kind of a casual uh, a treat for them um, in, 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 uh, for the efforts that they have given in the, uh, the CAMC. And they will also be awarded a certificate of appreciation and a moment to as well. All right, so now um, we also, uh, I also want to talk about the, uh, the housing, um, the hostel accommodation we provide at Texela, mostly for the international students. Um, any students who come from different Caribbean, we provide them a complimentary accommodation free for first semester. When I say semester, it's for six months. So every student will be given an option you can stay at the hostel for free for first six months. When I say free, you will not be paying anything for the stay, but you got to take care of your utilities and the light bills, right? So this is how the um, the um, the hostel looks like. We have a separate um, hostel for boys, and we have a separate hostel for girls. And uh, both the hostel has a separate uh, the hostel warden security, and we also have a snack. It is also available. So in case if students want to buy food or you know you want to buy grab something, yes, you can always um, you can pay and you can get your, your snack at whatever is available at the store. I mean at the hostel. And this is how the, uh, the bedrooms looks like at the hostel. It would be a shared accommodation, two persons uh, living in a room. And uh, you have uh, the, the living room, you have a, I mean, a bedroom and you have a bathroom as well. Okay, so the admission process is gonna be very simple. As I said earlier, uh, student with CSEC, you have to have a minimum five subjects of which you have to have, I mean, the mandatory subjects are like science, any one science, except the agricultural science. Uh, you should have math, you should have English, and any other two subjects. 
provided all the five should be within the rate of one to three, uh, then you qualify for five and a half years. Student with C, I mean, student with K, K1 and two, I mean, you should have physics, chemistry, and biology. If you have all three subjects, then you will be qualified for four and a half years. Even if you do not have any one subject, you still you have to study five and a half years, right? All right, so to start up with the admission process, some of the basic documents that we require is we would require your copy of your CSEC or your copy of your CAP or your copy of your bachelor's degree with the transcripts. You would also need a photo ID. When I say a photo ID, it could be a passport or it could be a driving license or it could be a, a, your respective country ID. All right, so once we, once we check your the educational documents, we would evaluate and we would let you know whether you're qualified. If you're qualified, we will give you an acceptance letter stating that you are eligible to study medicine at Texas American University, right? And, um, and once you're eligible and a seat deposit has to be done, when I say seat deposit, which would be 2,180 US, which would be a part of your tuition fee that has to be paid to confirm your seat so that you would also be qualified for the 50% of the scholarship, right? And um, below the documents that you got to work on is like you should also have the, the police clearance, the fingerprint has to be done to ensure that there is no cases against you. And uh, health checkup has to be done we would give you a physical health test form. You have to take the form, go to the hospital and do the respective test, and you have to submit the reports to us. And you should have the yellow fever vaccination and hepatitis B vaccination. And um, the sponsors, who are sponsoring, you should produce the sponsor's bank statement the last six months of the bank statement. All right, so here we talk about the tuition fees, so, right. Um, the actual tuition fee is, if you, you see at the top, it's like $20,000 per year, but uh, we've been offering scholarship uh, for the Caribbean nationals at 50%. Um, and that will be, a, that will be an, on an average, approximately it will be $10,000 per year, right? So we have two options, I mean, a fee payment option. Either you can pay on a yearly plan, or we have an option either you can go for a two-part payment or you can also go for a four-part payment, right? So you, you could see the actual scholarship and the, uh, and, uh, you can see the actual tuition fee and the scholarship what is offered. Um, um, if you see the, uh, the second installment option, that will be, uh, the fees will be $1,000 more because when you go for the part payment, the installment will be higher. So it is not necessary that you have to pay only a two-part payment. You can also go for a four-part payment as well. When I say four-part payment, let's say the fees is $11,000, right? So you can pay it four-part. So that will be approximately, let me say, let's say that will be $2,750 once in every three months you pay. If you see the second year fee, it's still reduced. It will be 9,500. Third year fee is 10,500. The fourth year is 9,500. The fifth year is 9,500. And the last five years is 5,300. Right, so this is um, after the scholarship. So this scholarship, I mean, will be a limited period of time. Whoever confirms the uh, whoever gives the documents and whoever gets the acceptance letter and whoever confirms the seed deposit, that will be, you know, as I mentioned you here, right? So, like, to proceed with Texas American University, there is an application fee of $30, and there will be an admission processing fee, it's 150. So, the scholarship will be given only for 20 students, uh, but this time we already had a discussion with the board and uh, so we decided to increase the scholarship of 
opportunities for up to 40 students across the all the Caribbeans. So like you can take an advantage uh, of the 50% scholarship, right? So to begin with, the application and the admission processing fee, which is in total is 180, has to be paid. So once you pay the 180, your document will be evaluated and you will be given an acceptance letter. And once the acceptance letter is given, you have to make $2,000, which would be your part of your first year tuition fee. So that the seat is confirmed and the scholarship is confirmed and we block the seat for you, right? And so when you're paying the tuition fee, you can, I mean, you can deduct the 2,000 which you already paid and the balance fee can be paid before you travel. So that is a seat deposit, which is $2,000. All right, so these are some of the students who graduated. I mean, um, you could see the pictures of them. All right, so that's, that's pretty much from my end. Um, um, so if you have any questions, you can always feel free. I mean, you could, um, there's a chat box option at the bottom. You could uh, leave your um, text. And uh, yes, I see that some of them already texted. I mean, probably could answer it right now. Yeah, I see um, one of the participants mentioned that uh, the shortage of medical doctors is basically depend upon the financial stuff. Yes, I purely agree. So um, you mentioned that the medicine is very expensive. Yeah, medicine is very expensive. For example, if you see UV, the, their fees is like mostly to $25,000 to $30,000 a year. But at Texas American University, we are offering a scholarship. So you can study medicine at $10,000 per year. So if you're really interested, you can take an advantage of it. Um, um, clarified asking me, uh, do we offer a scholarship, 100% scholarship? Uh, unfortunately, we do not offer 100% scholarship because we are a private medical school. We can offer up to only 50%, um, but for not all the students, only to the 40 students, whoever is interested, they have to confirm their their, the scholarship by paying the seed deposit only then the uh, scholarship will be will be offered all right um there's a student um kamisha davis has asked i have a first degree in bsc math with education however the only science i have completed at Cape, the level of math and physics. Although I did all the subjects at CSEC, would I be eligible? Yes, you can. You are eligible, and your duration would be five and a half years based on your um, the CSEC and the kit. You are eligible to study medicine. Good morning. I mean, um, from Shanila Bakker. If there's a case where you are in lower six, can you still apply, or you have to wait until the second year? Okay, fine. Uh, even if you are in Cape 1 or the lower Cape, yes, you can apply. And uh, even I have students in our campus with uh, lower 6, and they are studying with us. So even if you are in lower 6 and if you want to study medicine, yes, you can always come down to Texela. Or if you want to apply, yes, you can always apply. Okay, so from... From Christian, Christian Richards, how do I apply for the scholarship? As I said, I mean, um, you have to send your documents to us and we would evaluate and we would check whether you're qualified for the scholarship. Once you're qualified, you have to confirm the 2,180 US and we would provide you scholarship and that would be 100% guarantee, right? Is, I mean, from Monique, is the 50% scholarship specific to one of your campus? I mean, 50% uh, scholarship we've been offering to some of the Caribbean nationals. Yes, uh, we offer only up to 40 uh, students, not for everybody.
All right, so that's a pretty interesting question. Um, as you guys know that there is a pandemic, I mean, most of the Jamaicans, they study in China and the other countries, and I see that quite a lot of students being um, transferring from other medical school to Texila. Yes, we have a quite a lot of students, uh, in fact, from UV, and we have students from um, some of the medical schools in China, they've been transferred to Texel American University. Yes, you can transfer to Texel, but we would require your, the original transcripts. All right, so only then you can be, trans, you can be transferred to Texel and you can be accepted. So without, without the, the original transcript, we were not able to accept you. Okay, uh, there's a question from Ashley Brown. What if I do not have math? Yes, math is, math is one of the, the mandatory subjects. Without the math, we would not be able to accept the students. Yes, you can do your math, reappear for your math, and you can get back to us. Um, question from Ian Marbir. Is there any student loan available? Um, um, unfortunately, Mick, I mean, we don't offer any student loan available. I mean, you have to find in the sponsors. Um, yes, because since we are a private medical school, we don't arrange loans from our end. Okay, so when is the deadline for applying for the scholarship? Um, I mean, the application has already started for the September 2020. The deadline will be, um, I mean, because of the pandemic, we are not sure when the CSEC or the, or the CAPE exam is going to happen. Um, so, um, so as of now, the, the applications are open for the September intake. We've been accepting students, but the deadline is not confirmed. Usually the deadline would be the end of the August. And the, uh, the classes or the academic year will start by the first week of September 2020, usually. Okay, so what are the admission period for the university? Basically, we have two intake per year. One is in March and the other one is on September. There's a question from Ashley Brown. Uh, you have all the subjects and then you do not have math. Yes, math is 100% required. It was stated that the, okay, there's a question from Nevon Allen. Um, stated that first six months of Darwin is free, but what are the estimated costs after that? All right, that's a brilliant question though. Um, the cost for the dorms after the six months that will be 1,500 US. So that would, uh, I mean, that's purely for the accommodation. And again, as I said, you have to take care of your food, your utilities, and I mean, you got to take care of your life bills. Um, let's say uh, an average living cost in Guyana will be, let's say you have 300 or 350 US, which is more than enough. You can uh, take care of your food, you can take care of your utility, and you can take care of your local travel. And, you know, that is what I spend from my end. I mean, it is not like so expensive in Jamaica or Trinidad and Bahamas. So with $350, you can, you can take care of your living here in Guyana. All right, so this question from Xavier, I have three science subjects in CSEC level, but I do only physics and chemistry one and two in CAP that does make qualify for 4.5. No, Mike, I mean, um, in order to qualify for 4.5, you have to have physics, chemistry, and biology in CAP one and two, only then you will be qualified for 4.5. A question from Ashley, what year would we be transferred if I finished three years of studies elsewhere? All right, so you have to submit your transcript. All right, so once you submit your transcript, we would evaluate with our standard, with our curriculum to ensure that if it matches our requirements, if it is matches our requirement, then you would start from where you left because there are some students who come from China, the curriculum is not as good as like our curriculum. In that case, they have to start a semester, a couple of semester, you know, they have to redo once again. All right, there's a question from Monique. Uh, so 50% scholarship is only for Guyana campus. Yes, 50% scholarship is only for the Guyana campus. 
only for the Caribbean nationals. Question from Lee, Lisa Richardson. No, we do not offer dentistry. At the moment, we offer only medicine. All right, the question from Christian Richards, in terms of hostel, do you have single rooms? Would I able to get those in the first year? Yes, we also have a single room with single occupancy. In that case, the cost will be USD. I mean, it will be 3,500 US per year, All right? So that will be an additional cost. If you're okay, we can provide you with that or else you can take an advantage of the, uh, you know, the, the shared accommodation. Uh, we do not offer pathology uh, as in a separate um, program, but pathology is also a part in the medicine program. All right, so the question from Lamara Tidal, uh, is there any payment plan? Yes, the payment plan is there. You can uh, pay in four part payment. Um, but unfortunately, we do not support anybody in terms of the work or I mean, we don't recommend anybody to work and study because medicine that you have to be 100% focused, 100% you have to on your studies. So if anybody do not have fun and thinking that you can work and study, the medicine would not be the right option though. All right, the question from Gerald Grant. Even though the pandemic is going on, still possible for traveling for the admission for September. That's a very good question, Janelle. Yeah, I want to register here for everybody. Um, Texila is, I mean, is one of um, a technology driven institution. Though we have 650 students at the moment, uh, still the classes are going on. Not right now, and physically in the campus because we have our own online platform. So the students are studying in the respective homes. Some of them are in the country, some of them are in the dorm, but you know, the faculties go online and the regular classes are happening online. So, you know, see, practically if you ask me, I would not have any clue when the pandemic is gonna over, but still, you know, we cannot stop certain things or, you know, we, we, we have to ensure that we have to work and do the best in the given situation. So the admission is, is still going on. I mean, let's say you're in Jamaica and you're already enrolled. As long as you have internet connection, you can start you know, logging into our online system, the faculty will come in and take classes and the regular interactive sessions will be there. So you will not feel it's a regular classroom or the online classroom because the classes are taken in such a, such a way. Yeah. The 50% uh, scholarship is applicable for both for 5.5 years and 4.5 years. All right, there's a question from Jamaya Baker. No, the tuition fee is only purely for the tuition. And there's a separate cost on the accommodation and the living cost that has to be taken care of by you. Also, if you have a CAP 1 and 2 in science, biology, chemistry, physics, the greater 1 to 3 bracket, the MD duration would be 4.5. Yes, if you have CAP 1 and 2, and you have physics, chemistry, biology with a grade of one to three, you will be qualified for four and a half years. All right, and um, in case, okay, that's a question from Kamisha Davis. In case that you pay a minimum required fee, I hope so, of acquiring the scholarship, but do not get selected for sponsorship, is the amount refundable, yes? If you confirm your seed deposit, which is 2,180, right? So the 180 is the, the application and the admission fee. But the $2,000 is a part of your tuition fee. In case you want to decline from this offer, the 2,000 will be refunded because the 180 will not be refunded, but that is an application and the admission fee. However, the 2,000 will be refunded. There's a question from the LAJ, Laj, do you accept CSEC only? No, we accept CSEC, we accept um, CAPE, we accept uh, students from the associated bachelor's level. And if you're from Bahamas, yes, we do accept the Bahamian high school level as well. The question from Valentina, what is the duration that if you already have two degrees, 
if you have a bachelor's in science, if any science bachelor's that you have, your duration will be still the four years. Yeah, the question from Alia Gordon, even if you have CAPE, can you still apply with CSEC? Yes, you can still apply with CSEC. Question from Lamara Tyrell. Also, what if you have human and social biology in CSEC along with seven other subjects in terms of math and English, completed a course in practical nursing and certified practical nursing uh, is certified a practical nursing as well as CAPE would I be qualified? No, in this case, you will be qualified only for five and a half years because we do not accept any certified courses. If you are a registered nurse, yes, we might consider that might go for another uh, way of, that might go for lesser duration, but the certification will not be considered as, as equal to a K. A question from Ashley Virgin. I'm a Jamaican studying in Beijing, China, the Capital Medicine Medical University. I've been trying to transfer to some of the other Caribbean medical since March, but my school's offices are not open for the school here to contact my school. Do I do have my transcript that I could email to you, and if you could like to take a look at that, as far as Texas is trying to directly contact, I mean, the China Medical School. I'm not sure when my school offices will be open because of the pandemic. Can I email a copy of the transcripts to you? Yes, you can. I just want to let you know that I, I just had another student from China uh, who just recently uh, enrolled just a week back. Uh, I'm not sure whether you know her name. I mean, I guess she's also in this, if I'm not um, wrong. Her name is Shashi Weber, and she's from Jamaica as well. She just enrolled last week from China Transfer. All right, so thanks a lot. That is much about the question and answers. If you have any questions, you can always feel free to uh, you know, I mean, um, uh, leave your questions here. I mean, uh, at this moment, I would also like to introduce um, uh, my associates. As you know, the Texila is physically present in Guyana, and we have so many associates working in different countries. And we have two of our associates uh, I would like to uh, introduce um, to everybody, people who do not know them. We have uh, nurse Clarissa Bailey, and she's uh, our associate for us, and she's been with us since 2017. And we also have um, sister um, Sharon Bennett, and she's also an associate at Texas American University. And she's been with us since uh, September 2019. Um, so right now, I would like to um, hear a few from Nurse Bailey, followed by uh, Ms. Bennett. Um, so, um, Hello, everyone. Nurse Bailey, yes. Yes, Hello. good morning. Can you all hear me? Right. So actually, I've been working with Texela since March, April 2016. My daughter went up March 2016 and she just have two months and two weeks left to finish up. And here COVID-19 came in, but God is good. <laughs> and I've enjoyed working with Texel. I've sent up over 100 students since September 2016 until September 2019. And I'm working on lots of students now for this year, by the grace of God. And I enjoy the work in the Texela and the, um, some of the students, I can see that they are enjoying it from the feedback that I'm getting from them. And I will continue to work with Texela and send up lots of students. God bless you all. Nice working with Mrs. Bennett. She is now on board and both of us are working together. We travel all over the island to recruit students to send up to Texela. And her two daughters are there also. Thanks be to God. 
Good morning, yeah. everyone. Thanks. Are you hearing me? Yes, yes, oh, yeah. loud and clear, loud and clear, Ms. Bennett. Thanks a lot, Nurse Bailey, for your comments. Yes, um, you're welcome. Right, I'm, I'm, uh, right now I'm leaving with Ms. Uh, Sharon Bennett. Probably you could share your comments, uh, Ms. Bennett. Hi, good morning, everyone. As Mr. Shakti introduced me, I'm Mrs. Bennett. I have two daughters who just started Texila in September. Both of them are in 5.5 years. One is older, they're not twins. One is 19 and the other is 17. The 17 year old left directly from Hampton and straight into Texila. Uh, what I can tell you guys is that Texila is one of a kind. I recommend it to any parent your child will be safe because no matter what your age is, you're still our child. You're still our babies. And what I can tell you is that these two girls, they are there and they navigate so well. They're doing excellent at Texila. They speak highly of Texila. Though the pandemic is happening, they have no interest in coming home because they're saying they're still getting what they went there for. So even though you guys are interested in attending for September, if you don't physically go there, you won't be missing anything, right? And what I can say is that the sky is the limit. And if this is what you want, go for it. Texilla door is open for everyone. No matter what the situation is, Call, send an email, they understand and they will work with you because their goal is getting you guys where you want to go and that is to be the best doctors you can be, right? So what I can say to you all is that if you're interested and really know this is your passion, go ahead, register and get on board with us because we will take you where you want to go. I hope everyone is keeping safe and we're following all the protocols that have been given by government and the Ministry of Health. And I just wish you all the best and we're here to serve you. Um, nurse and I are online so you can always tune in via um, WhatsApp with us and ask any questions, feel free. I have little snippets of my girls there. I think I can send to you if you want some more comfort. So you can ask in the WhatsApp group for those who are in there. Uh, okay. Ms. Bennett, if, Ms. Bennett, if you have on your laptop or on, on your the device you're connected, I can give you an option. You can share it if, in case if you want. I don't think I have it with me now on my phone. Uh -huh. So I'd have to get it from the girls and then I could send it over. No problem, no problem. And uh, Ms. Bennett, you could also talk about uh, right now, considering the current situation and, and, uh, and uh, how your daughters are I mean, studying the program online. You can also share that experience as well. Yeah, as I was saying, yes, I'm saying for them, they have no interest in coming home because they're getting their classes online. They have tests every Friday. They get their regular exams on a Friday. And um, they brought my attention just yesterday saying that their finals, if everything is not cleared up by then, they'll be doing it at home. And guys, honestly, Texila, when it comes to te technology, they have it because even though you'll be in the comfort of your own home doing your exam, they know if you're cheating. So you cannot cheat, right? So they are prepared. They were always prepared for times like this. So it's not like you'll be missing out anything um no within this time so you can go ahead and do it and the girls the, the girls the, as i said they just have no interest in coming home because the jamaican government sent um message to them the jamaicans if they want to come home then they'll they'll prepare a flight to come to ghana and get them and they have no interest in coming home because they're still there in class um getting their classes daily i think their classes start um at 12 most days because they're at home and they do keep register. So if you're not logged in, then you will have an absent. And up, um, attendance is key at Texila because that's 5%, 5 easy percent of your grade. So there's no time to waste. Once you're doing this, you're in good hands. That's the most I can see. I know that as a parent, um, 
if the girls are slipping up, I do get an email or I do get a WhatsApp message or I do get a call just to let me know what's happening. So it's not like Yui, where you're attending Yui, you're failing and parents don't know. Your parents will know if you're failing. And it doesn't make any sense you go into something like this to fail. We are about passing. That's what Textila is about. Um, attendance is also key because if you're not there, then your parents or your family member, whoever is responsible for you, will know that you're not attending class. Thus, failure is a must because you're there for one reason, and that's to pass and get over it because the t tuition fee is still better than most places because I was a parent rooting for China as I go to China. But since I found Textilla, honestly, I'm happy with them. And I can tell you, you are getting quality for your money. It is a lot because to find 11,000 or 10,000, which is, this, I'm talking about the scholarship part of it. It is a lot because for me, I'm paying double. But it is something if you make your mind up, it can work. And for any parents who is listening in, it is something that can work. As I say, if things are not working out the way as planned, text lines are open for you to call. A text message can be sent in or an email can be sent in and they will work with your child. You're the student. So you have nothing to worry about. Just let's get this done for these children and the adults that are here there's no fear but get out your stuff right and talk to us we'll make it happen it's a shakti yes uh, miss bennett well said thanks thanks for sharing your opinion uh, miss bennett um you're welcome yes right and at the same time i mean for all the participants um, people who are from jamaica uh, in case you want to talk to our experts, I mean, I've left, I've shared the screen. I mean, you can see Nurse Bailey's contact number, and you can also see Mrs. Uh, Sherin Bennett's contact number. Uh, both of them are available in WhatsApp. And I mean, so if you need any assistance, please do um, reach them directly. And uh, so whenever you talk to them, and whenever they guide the information, whenever they get the documents and they would share the documents directly to me as well, right? And that's a question from the student. Um, um, good morning, anyone from the Bahamas? Uh, There's a student called Dakota, I believe so. Hi, at, at the moment, I'm, I, I, I'm not sure is that anybody from Bahamas, but, I'm, but we have students from Bahamas uh, who's already uh, studying with us. We have like, um, more than six, seven students from the Bahamas, they, they are with us. So if you have any other questions, yes, you can always text us and I will be happy to assist you. All right, that's a question from Mia Thomas. Can I view the cost for the year's slides, please? All right, okay, so people who have, um, who have not taken the numbers, you can take the numbers and uh, of, the, uh, of my of Jamaican associates there, um, as I'm going on another slide. All right, so you can have a look at the free slide once again. So let me repeat that the fees option that we have, um, um, you can pay in the yearly plan, which you can see on the left-hand side that goes on the yearly plan. The other one is uh, you can pay in two-part payment or you can pay in four-part payment. There will be a little bit fee increase in it because of the, uh, the part payment students. Question from George Lee Moore. Is there any program for BSc in surgery? No, we do not have BSc in, BS in surgery, but however, we have the bachelor's in medicine. That is the only program that we focus in right now. Question from Nivon Allen. Is there any special requirements for the transferring students? Yes, we would require, require your CSEC and we would require your transcripts. Only if you have your transcripts, we can transfer to Texas American University. Yeah, because we would evaluate your transcript. So based on the curriculum match, then we would let you know how many years or the duration that you're qualified for. 
Do you accept students from Cuba? Yes, we do accept students um, from Cuba as well. If the only the prerequisite for a transfer student is, yes, I mean, uh, if you are a transfer student, please ensure that you have the, the original transcripts. So that is the main requirement. If that is that, if, if that is that you have it, definitely we can evaluate your transcript and we can see what best can be done for you. Yes, I um, mean, the question from Dakota, who are eligible for 50% scholarship? The students from all the Caribbean are eligible for 50% scholarship, including the Bahamas as well. So once you complete your Bahamian high school, you should have at least, I mean, any one science subject. Um, you have to have um, a math and an English and any other two subjects. So you should be eligible for 50% scholarship. Right, um, just give me a moment. yeah. How much sea strength that you should have for a chance for this program? You have to have a minimum five subjects with English, math, any one science subjects, and the other two subjects. All right. Uh, does the, the tuition, I mean, the question from Dakota, does the tuition seen on the side include the accommodation? No, I'm afraid the tuition is purely the tuition fee. Accommodation would be provided free of cost for first six months for all the international students. Uh, however, you got to take out of your utility and your light bills. After the six months, you have to pay 1,500 US provided if you would like to stay in the hostel or uh, unless like other students, they find a house close by the, uh, the university and their friends all join together and they find the house more economical as well. We also have that option as well. That's another question. Kristen Richards, question, does the scholarship cover any part of the accommodation fee? The scholarship would cover only the tuition fee. It would not cover the accommodation fee. All right, um, I also got a, a receipt from uh, confirmation from Ms. Bennett stating that the student Amoya K. Barrett paid the, uh, the application and the registration fee. Uh, that's a great work. I mean, please do pass on the congratulations to her. I mean, we can also confirm the scholarship for uh, Amoya K. Barrett. All right, so um, you can please have a make a note of this number. I mean, once again, so in case of any further questions, please feel free to uh, reach uh, our Jamaican associates and they should be able to assist you on the further admission process. There's one more question from Lamara Tyrell. Can you please confirm the period I will be eligible for? I'm a certified practic practical nurse with seven subjects, including math, English, human science, and biology, as well as a CAPE subject. Okay, so you should be qualified for five and a half years. In case provided, if you have physics, chemistry, and biology, in K1 and 2, then you will be qualified for 4.5. If you do not have physics, chemistry, biology, all these three, then you will be qualified for 5.5. All right, so uh, thanks a lot once again for all the participants who participated in this event and made this um, very good and more of a uh, question and uh, clarifying Q&A session. It's very good though. And I would appreciate the presence of Nurse Bailey and uh, Mrs. Sher Sherilyn Bennett to share your views as well. You're welcome, sir. Thank you, Nurse. Mm -hmm. And also, Mr. Shetty, um, yes, the yes. students know that when they are ready to do their CAMC exam, Matt uh -huh. Van Bailey is the one who will um, ass assist them in passing their practical exams. 
and he will do that. Oh, that's that's a nice piece of information, nurse. Thank you. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you, Mr. Shakti and nurse. Remember, we have Amaya Lee to welcome to our group. So oh. I sent you the information. All right, I'll do that just now. Okay. Yeah. All right, keep safe, everyone. Yes, yes, nurse. I mean, uh, Miss Bennett, that, that's, that's what I was saying. I, I said I received the, uh, the confirmation from Mrs. Bennett about uh, um, the student. What's the name? Is Amoya. Amoya. Yes, right. yes. So we can also confirm the scholarship for her. Okay. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Everybody, you, you enjoy your rest of your day. I mean, um, stay home um, and uh, stay focused. And uh, so anything you want to do, please look into the online stuff. Do not go nowhere. And just follow the instructions from the Ministry of the Health. And uh, let's, let's, say, uh, let's, say, let's everybody pray together and stay safe. Let's see that this COVID pandemic would get, I mean, subsided at the earliest. Yes, sir. All right. So thanks a lot, everybody. You have a great day. Bye-bye. Take care. Okay, bye.